She's brassy and bold, quite a catch. She's got a heart of gold with earrings to match. The ladies get the national when she shakes her ass, and she will tell. Friends, friends. Hey, friends. Here's friend. Pressure in families these days. For a lot of people, finances are tight, stress levels are high, and there's never enough time in the day. So how do you hold your family together and keep it happy and healthy? We brought in an expert with some very important tips. Please welcome Dr. Wendy Walsh. How do you do? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Okay. <clears throat> So we're experiencing in today's shows all kinds of families. So what advice can you give? I mean, is there like things that you can say to our viewers at home uh, that will help them to keep a family functioning and not dysfunctional? There are a few things, Fran. And you know what? We say they're all this huge blend of families, multicultural families, gay, single parent families, people without children like yourself who are still a parent because you've got to parent the culture. And you've yeah. got the nieces and the nephews and the cousins. We're all in it together. And We're blended a giant families, village. Blended a lot families. of divorced couples. We are one big village here. So let's start at the beginning of life. The okay. most important gift you can give your child is a healthy attachment and bond in the first three months because wow. that's when you create a pessimist or an optimist. Their brain trips triples in size from zero to three, and they're trying to figure out whether they can trust the world or not. What if you wanted to adopt a child that's a little older and, you know, has already had whatever past Well, here's had. the great news about attachment injuries. There is room to repair across the lifespan. There oh, are God. all kinds of ways to, to repair. But I should say that in our today's workplace, because I know there are people at home going, oh, yeah, you expect me to stay home and starve my child for three years so I can have that bond? Uh -huh. <laughs> well... Today's workplace is perfectly suited to a family of the 1950s with one breadwinner and one stay-at-home homemaker. But we don't have that kind of workforce today. Right. We have tag team parents, one working the night shift, one the day shift. We have parents that are both working in after-school child care. So how do you do it? What do we do? Well, what you need to do is realize that in the very early years, your kid doesn't need a house and a playground and you don't need two cars. A baby's home is its parent's body. Wow. And that's all they know in the first three years. But let's go to number two, because then we're talking about I love that. when your baby steps out into the world. You know, when a, it's bittersweet. Every mommy knows that when your baby heads to kindergarten and you're basically handing it to your village. So number two is create a strong, supportive village. Whether that means that you follow a traditional religion and you want to live in an area where you can go to parochial school, whether it means that you think diversity, both socially and racially, is so important to your values you want to live in an area that supports what your beliefs are so that you, so that when other people pinch hit for you other parents pick up your kids there's chit chat in the car people are babysitting for you teachers have certain ideas and morals and ethics that they will reflect your values as a parent because you can't do it alone right it's part of the village okay that's great so then they get older you get then your their, little community. Yeah, then they're middle your school. Your Exactly. <laughs> 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 then they get older. Middle school. Teenage. Now they're using technology. Parenting becomes one big driving event and drop-off event. And, I mean, my kid talks to me via Facebook from her iPod from the next room. Okay? <laughs> the technological piece is crazy. So I say you've got to constantly reinvest with your child by doing 20 minutes of FaceTime a day where you're actually talking. about No technology, no person, each I kid 20 minutes. You so, commit to 20 minutes a day, and that makes a significant difference in the well-being of the of child. Of course. Now, also, if you're, if you're raising kids with a partner, you've got to nurture that relationship, too. So you've got to give at least 20 minutes a day to your husband or to wife or whoever, whoever, yeah. What is the fourth thing? The fourth thing is you've got to remember that family lasts forever. Mm. And across the lifespan, there is room for repair. There's room for rekindling. And don't leave your family behind because they are who you are. They're the root of who you are, whether that's holiday traditions, whether that is getting together on Facebook or getting together in person. And remember, it, there's always room to forgive because no one gets out of childhood unscathed. Yes, yeah, anybody, no. anybody who says they had a happy no, no, childhood no. makes me suspicious. Right. Well, you know, even if you had a childhood, there's always some way your parents screwed you up. Exactly. And it's not because they meant to, you know. But thank you, Dr. Walsh.